We define interval velocity, vi, as the thickness of a particular layer, delta z, or z2 minus z1, divided by delta t, the time it takes to travel from the top of the layer to the base of the layer, or t2 minus t1. vi is also equal to twice the interval thickness, 2 delta z, divided by the two-way interval travel time, delta t. We know that the depth from the surface to the shallow interface is 3,350 feet. This is also the interval thickness of the shallow layer. And the two-way time to the shallow horizon is 1.050 seconds, which is also the interval time, since again this is the shallowest layer. So the interval velocity of the shallow layer is equal to two times 3,350 feet divided by 1.050 seconds, or 6,381 feet per second. That's the same value as the average velocity. True. For the layer along the surface, the average velocity equals the interval velocity. But this is not true for the deeper layer. For the deeper layer, we again calculate the interval velocity by dividing twice the interval thickness, 2 delta z, by the difference in two-way time, delta t. For the deep layer, interval velocity equals 2 times 5,220 feet minus 3,350 feet divided by 1.575 seconds minus 1.050 seconds, giving us an interval velocity of 7,124 feet per second. So our study area has a shallow horizon with an average and interval velocity of 6,381 feet per second and a deeper horizon with an average velocity of 6,629 feet per second and an interval velocity of 7,124 feet per second. Now let's compare the average velocity curve we calculated earlier to the interval velocity curve we just calculated. Notice the smooth nature of the average velocity curve versus the stepped or layer cake appearance of the interval velocity curve. The discrete boundaries in the interval velocity curve indicate stratigraphic and velocity differences between adjacent layers. We derive the two curves from the same data but we are measuring velocity in different ways. Actual average and interval velocity curves are more complicated, like the curves we see here. Which curve we use depends on the nature of the subsurface within our study area. If the lithology changes gradually with depth, then we can use an average velocity curve. But if the lithology changes dramatically at discrete boundaries, then we should use an interval velocity curve.